Well, let's get started with these special right triangles. On the left, the 45, 45, 90, and over here, the 30, 60, 90. This one also called the isosceles right triangle for obvious reasons. Now, the big thing is the ratio of the sides, which we will explain much more later on, but let's just throw it out there. 1, 1, radical 2 for this triangle. And over here on 30, 60, 90, 1, 2, easy as 1, 2, radical 3. Be careful, radical 3 is smaller than 2, but we'll explain more of that later. However, it might be useful now when they're together just to see that the 45, 45, 90, the one on the left, well, can be made from a square, and the other one from an equilateral triangle. More on this in a little bit. Okay, let's work with the 45, 45, 90 triangle first. And I'm going to say that this one has unit sides, one, one inch, mile, kilometer, whatever they are. One and one for the two legs. I'll just go right to the Pythagorean theorem there. And let me see, A and B are the legs. I'll substitute in the ones. And I can, let me see, square those, add them up. And now I've got C squared is two. And if I take the principal root, therefore this C is radical two, about 1.41. This is just demonstrating to me that the ratio of the sides here, or these particular sides, are 1, 1 and radical 2. Now, let's extend this with similar triangles. Well, I've got this triangle here with the unit legs 1, 1 and the hypotenuse of radical 2. And using the concept of similar triangles, I could take that figure and I could make it, you know, I could make it bigger. Let's make it bigger by a scale factor of 5. That would make each of the legs of this larger triangle 5. Well, what's 5 times radical 2? That would be 5 radical 2. So this is the concept that we're using every time we employ this ratio of the sides, 1, 1, square root of 2. Well, now that we've seen this ratio, 1, 1, radical 2, let's apply it to these four triangles here. And all the givens are in green. We'll find the missing sides in red. Um, well, if I'm going here, this is the 1, 1. The radical 2 is pretty obvious. It's you know, 1, 1, radical 2. Um, giraffe, 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 radical 2. 12, 12, 12, radical 2. How many radical 2s? 12. Well, that's pretty easy. Let's try this one. Let's go to the right. 7, radical 2. Remember, the ratio is 1, 1, radical 2. Well, what number times radical 2 gives me 7 radical 2? Well, that's pretty straightforward. 7, 7, 7 radical 2. Um, this one, hmm, whoa, this one's a little trickster here. These signs are in the ratio of 1, 1, square root of 2. What that means is whatever this sign is in green, I'm going to multiply it by the square root of 2. And there you go. When I multiply 5 radical 2 by radical 2, that becomes the whole number 10. Okay, and check your arithmetic with your math teacher, but you should know that. Now, how about this one? I've got a whole number in the hypotenuse. Can that be? It can be anything. Again, the ratio is 1, 1, radical 2. Now, if I'm going from red to green, I'm multiplying by radical 2. From here to here, I'm dividing. Aha. Uh -huh. And then I have to rationalize because in, in that magenta because we don't like radicals in the denominator. When you multiply this out, you get, oops, I'm skipping ahead a little bit. You're going to get this, 12 radical 2 over the whole number 2. And very conveniently, those numbers are, whoa, that's going to divide out there. At 2, we'll divide out with 12 and leave us with as we saw before, 6 radical 2. So each of these sides is 6 radical 2. All right, so again, 12 radical 2 are missing sides. Sevens are our missing here. This side would be 10, and this side will be 6 radical 2. So let's launch right into the 30, 60, 90 triangle with a bit of a construction. We're going to start with this segment over here. And what we're going to do is put our compass on one end and we're going to swing an arc wee like that. Then we'll pick up the needle and put the needle on the other side there and 
We're going to swing this arc, wee, and you recognize that. That's the perpendicular bisector construction. So much comes out of that because right there you've got the equilateral triangle. Or I could draw the perpendicular bisector. But when I put the two of them together, see that's when I'm getting this. Aha. Uh -huh. This is going to be the 30, 60, 90 triangle. So let's um well let's let's work this out a little bit here. First off, I know the again I had an equilateral triangle, that was 60, 60, 60. Then this perpendicular bisector split it in half, split this angle in half, it bisected the angle, as well as being in altitude. So that's how I got the 30 and the 60. Okay, so now let's do a little bit of algebra. I'm going to say let s equals 2, and that's just going to be any of the sides. It's equilateral triangle. This is s, this is s, and the one across there is s as well. Well, if that's 2, then half of 2, because this is a perpendicular bisector, that must mean that this side would be 1. Mm -hmm. Well, then all we have to do is employ the Pythagorean theorem, and let's substitute. So I've got 1 squared plus my unknown, I, oops, wrong one, h squared equals 2 squared. I could call it b, but it is actually the height of this figure. So let's move along there. I know 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. I subtract the 1 from the 4, h squared is 3. Then if I were to simplify that, then it should just be square root. So h is radical 3. That's this distance. The distance, oops, not that one, this one, ah, that one. The height of this figure. So it's just, this again tells us it's easy as 1, 2, radical 3 for this triangle, the 30, 60, 90. Now let's solve for the missing sides in the in four of these samples here. The green will be our givens and we'll solve for the other two sides. That's what's neat here. We can solve for two only knowing one. So I'm going to take this ratio, one, two, radical three, and I'm going to distribute it. Remember the one, that's the short leg. That's the one next to the 60 degree angle. I put the 60s in red. Two is the hypotenuse and radical three is the long leg or the leg that touches the 30 degree angle. So if I've got four here, the ratio is obvious. This will be an easy one. Four times radical three, four radical three, four times two, eight. Oops, spread those out a little bit more there. And there you go. So let's keep these happy ratios moving along. Let's move them over to the right here. This is the short leg. This is the hypotenuse. And this is the long leg. Remember, hypotenuse opposite the right angle. The short side is next to or adjacent to the 60 degree angle. Well, I'm given the hypotenuse. Well, that's pretty straightforward. If the hypotenuse is 10, this side must be half that ratio, 2 to 1. Half of 10 is 5. Now, once I know this, this side is radical 3 times as big, and that's going to be 5 radical 3. Now we're doing a lot of talk about all these radicals, and you need to remember that the radical really is, um, it's just an irrational number, but we're going to leave it in radical form for now. Don't worry, we'll do plenty of decimal exercises where we um, expand those well, calculator exercises. Oh, let's keep this going here. We've got this side would be the 1, this is the 2, this is the hypotenuse, and the radical 3 is the long leg, which is next to or adjacent to the 30. Well, this is pretty easy too. 7 radical 3, well, okay, radical 3 is to 1, as 7 radical 3 is to some number, well, that's obviously going to be 7. And this side is twice as much, so it's going to be 7 and 14. 
again, from 7 radical 3, this is that whole similar triangles thing. Um, similar to 1, 2 radical 3 is 7, 14, 7 radical 3. All right, one more, and this one will be a little bit more exciting. This is the short leg. This is the hypotenuse. And this is the long leg, which is, by the ratio, known as the radical 3. Now, wait a minute. This doesn't have a radical 3 on it. Well, you know, it doesn't have to, and that's part of the problem with these exercises. I, I don't want you to think that it has to contain a radical 3. It just means this side is radical 3 times as big as this leg. Well, if I multiplied by radical 3 going from here to here, if I'm going from the long to the short, I'm going to divide by radical 3. See that? I divide by radical 3. And then comes that rationalizing the denominator business so I can do all that. And when I, um, you know, I'm going to give you a shortcut. Whenever you're dividing by a radical, in this case 3, just inst take the radicand, divide 12 by the whole number 3, which is 4. So your, um, your quotient would be 4 radical 3. Trust me, it works every time. Again, 12 divided by um, 3 is 4. So 12 divided by radical 3 is 4 radical 3. And you can do it the long way, rationalizing here. That makes this side 4 radical 3. The hypotenuse is twice that much, so that's going to be 8 radical 3. Okay, now we'll get more in-depth examples, but this is just to get us started. So make sure we get that concept down as the ratios, because remember, it's as easy as 1, 2, radical 3.